Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Cam. We're really excited to have you here. Uh, you're obviously uh, a super entrepreneur because under 30 and you're doing really, really well from what we can uh, see anyway, So, which is, which is great. Look, I, I really want to find out more about your journey and where you're at. So uh, what, what really pushed you to start a uh, business? Yeah, yeah. So I started my first business when I was about 19 years of age. Um, I just simply wanted to create a lifestyle that I guess really aligned with my values and, and my passions. And, uh, back then I was really into surfing and really into surfboard design and decided I wanted to start making my own surfboards. Um, so it all just started from there. I created this little brand called Monster Surf. It was just a bit of a hobby back then. And, um, slowly started to to grow and and evolve into something much more than that and um yeah i was at uni at the time and i deferred to just work on business full-time ended up becoming my full-time gig left uni um and went from yeah this small backyard hobby making surfboards in my parents backyard and and t-shirts to a, a clothing brand with customers from over over 40 countries worldwide which was uh which was pretty wild Wow. That, that would have been a, a, quite a journey in business, uh, jumping on uh, like that. So what were you studying, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, first? I was actually studying <laughs> sports science. Um, ah, sports science. Okay. Back then, I, wanted, I was really interested in sport. And then, um, but I quickly, I, when I started my business, I realized like, I had a big passion for business and I wanted to learn more about that. So I transferred into a commerce degree. Um, I got two years through that and then I was just like, really busy running the business and um, so didn't actually get to finish that degree. But <laughs> I always uh, found I was like, I was learning more, um, I, get, I guess, just being in the everyday, day-to-day than what I was at uni at that stage. I'm really grateful for that time at uni. I learned some really yeah. great foundational business concepts, um, things that I still use today. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was um, it was a decision that my parents weren't too pleased about. They didn't really like the idea of like leaving the plan B, but um, yeah, I did it and haven't really looked back. Oh, oh, always the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, uh, so I guess you know. Obviously, you said you grew quite fast with with your monster brand first, yeah. and then uh, business basically took over your uni life. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is uh, were some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess initially uh, lack of resources and and lack of knowledge were two big ones to overcome and I I really found that um, creativity and and hard work, I guess, can overcome those things Um, and I guess a lack of resource can almost be a blessing in disguise because it makes you do things differently, um, which is what I really did and became my key advantage uh, back then. But the biggest obstacle I faced on my business journey with the monster brand was um, about four years in. It was like right when we were kind of at the peak of our success, we, we received a letter in the mail from California. We had a uh, big Californian company that didn't like us using the word monster. They might have sold energy drinks or something. I don't know. Um, the, the big boys came to, uh, to, to yeah. you, Cam. Wow. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. That, that ended up being like a two-year legal battle. Um, wow. which we ultimately just didn't have the cash flow to keep up with and we had to basically say, hey, because um, we were fighting it, they, mm. um, this legal opposition, and then we had to tell them like this was all getting too expensive and um because essentially, even if we won, which if we had the, um, the money, our lawyers would said, you know, it's spelled differently. It's a completely different category. Um, yeah, we, we just simply weren't going to be able to get to that stage. So we told them we're going to rebrand. We had like this settlement. And then part of that was we had about a, a, a bit over a year to, to close down the business and um, to start what we were essentially going to do as a rebrand, which has turned into Zerali today. Um, so we went from surf into the outdoors. I kind of saw it as a blessing in disguise because a lot of people would say to me, oh, I love your brand, but I don't surf. And I'd always say, it's not about surfing, it's about getting outside. So I kind of saw that opportun- uh, that uh, obstacle as an opportunity to like realign really like 
my biggest passion, which was getting people outside, not just in the surf. So um, into a surf brand. Well, it looks like it kind of worked out well uh, then, so which is <laughs> which is great. But I, I guess you know, with uh, challenges like that, especially with uh, you know two years fighting off a monster. I mean, it's a huge brand. We all know that lawsuits like that yeah, are yeah. really uh, dragged on by these uh, lawyers that uh, that that have the money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, As compared yeah. to a small business like yourself. So, so what was I mean the perseverance around that? I mean, you you would have had to. Yeah. Uh, build, uh, a thick skin one yeah. and then two the grit the grit to yeah. go uh, to to get yeah. yeah i mean there was a lot of times where i wanted to just give up like i just thought this is like this is crazy i'm like you know pouring all this money into this and it's like going nowhere <laughs> um i think that that's like the real importance of having a deep why behind what you do or like an yeah. anchor i guess like if anyone's been in a boat um Sometimes you don't realize like the anchor's down, but um, if if the anchor's not down, you just drift and you don't realize, but you've like drifted like kilometers and kilometers away from, from where you were. And um, to me, I see like my why, which is ultimately um, I, I just really want to be able to create a lifestyle that aligns with my values and beliefs and like is a direct reflection of who I am. Um, which I guess is the business that I've created. And um, I felt like that was kind of getting pulled away from me. And um, I like had a lot of times where I was just like, ah, maybe I'll just go do something easy. I'll just like, you know, give up this dream that I have and I'll just like go get a job and, you know, just kind of do something a bit easier than what I was trying to take on. Um, (laughs) I found having that anchor that why really like helped me persevere through that time. And, and the, the other thing was just like a um, perspective shift of just um, going, like, yeah, just looking at, you know, it was a pretty horrible situation to be in. Um, at one stage we were like over six figures in legal debt and we, and we were being told we're going to have to pay for their legal debt, uh, which was just crazy, especially at like a pretty young age to deal with. And, um, yeah, I just simply for a lot of time I was like I was the victim and I was like, oh, like this is so wrong and like uh, yeah. and then I just decided to have a perspective shift and I just thought what if this is an opportunity and what if one day I'll look back and this would be like a turning point, um, which was really hard to do. But I just, I just I'm a, I'm a big optimist so I just thought, all right, that's how I'm going to look at this and, um that's when I guess my imagination and my creativity kind of started coming back because it was like probably the lowest uh, time in my life, like mental health wise. I was really stressed and overwhelmed. And yeah. in that state, all your creativity just gets sucked out of you. Mm. So when I made that shift in perspective, um, yeah, I started, I guess, my imagination started coming back and I started to like dream of what could come out of this, and um, which is becomes Zorali, this outdoor brand that is um, my wife and I started two and a half years ago and it's gone way beyond like Monster ever was. And, um, yeah, we kind of look back now and, and see that was like actually a blessing in disguise, as weird as that may, may sound, because it really like pushed us into what we're doing today, which we feel like was, I guess, Monster was almost like the warm-up <laughs> and then <laughs> Zorali is like the, the thing that we were, I guess, uh, always like destined to, to to create it's a real reflection of who we both are yeah i have to give you kudos for that perspective change because it's a very tough one you know like yeah. we imagine your whole world your surfing world the the world that you grew up do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. That, yes you were trying to still sell it as, as outdoor but having that uh perspective especially from a mindset perspective uh is 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 huge so uh, yeah. i definitely uh give you all the props for that <laughs> which yeah, is right. which is incredible but right. you know what entrepreneurs uh are, are like that they they know how to uh, uh find that perspective in some shape or form um yeah. or be inspired um and obviously your creativity is where um 
where your inspiration comes from, and you can see that all over Zorali. So what was what was that? Uh, I guess um, how did you then pivot to Zorali? I mean, uh, yeah. what was the process around that? Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, so w- it was pretty crazy time uh, in <laughs> our life. My wife and I were about to get married. She like was working at Rip Curl. She was the designer there. She loved that job. It wasn't like she was looking to kind of uh, leave anytime soon, but we just like both really felt inspired to like create this brand together. And um, we didn't have much in terms of funding or resources because it was just all completely drained through the, the legal challenges we faced. But what we did have was like a really great community. So we thought, okay, like we've got this great community. That's our asset. Like how can we make the most of that and how can we tr- tr- transition this into Zorali? So we created this um, pretty out there video. It was like uh, me and like some of the monster team like walking through a forest and we're talking about like the highlights of monster and like all the great things that happen and then, Um, We got one of our friends who's, like, really tall guy um, to essentially dress up as this, like, Goliath-like character and we painted big brand on his chest and we kind of, like, slammed into him and, like, we told the whole story of how we got in this legal battle and how it, like, took us from, like, the mountaintop right down into the valley and then um, but we, like, you know, dusted ourselves up and we had this dream to take, you know, what we'd started and turn into an outdoor brand. And um, we literally invited our community to come along the journey by investing in what Zorali would be from as little as $100. So we ran essentially an equity crowdfund uh, campaign. We ended up raising $300,000 to over 550 investors, which is what we were, like, aiming to do. to create like we wanted to launch the brand with like a strong community behind it so um we actually capped the raise at max investment of five thousand dollars per person so we could get a like a widespread of people um so we did that one we needed funding like we weren't going to get the brand off the ground without it and two we what we needed like the marketing story we needed the like drive from the people and we needed to be able to like inspire our community who love monster to like become a part of Zorali and they literally mm-hmm. um, we invited them to be- actually become like a, a physical investor um, behind it. So That's yeah, incredible. that was kind of how we pivoted and um, it was a big process to like over two years of planning and then mm-hmm. um, we we're probably working on Zorali about a year. Of, oh yeah. Probably two years before like we launched that video. So it was like in the background for a long time and, yeah, we pulled it off, and um, that's awesome. Here we are. <laughs> that's incredible. That's incredible that you have that. I, I was just um, going to say that um, uh, you, you know, uh, you taking that risk of making that video and uh, and putting it out there so that people can just reach out to you in some shape or form. Uh, that's that's incredible. You know, you, you yeah. don't uh, hear that every day. So again, that comes down to your creativity and, and the way you do things. Um, so just in terms of, you know, obviously as a business owner, uh, what what is, uh, you know, what is the best thing about running a business? Well, what, what excites you apart from the creativity? Um, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think um, just being able to like wake up every day, get out of bed, <laughs> And work on something that you're deeply passionate about is that's probably my favorite thing. Um, you know, like I don't like even this last month we've um, we had like two days uh, a few weeks back where we did more in revenue than our whole first year. I'm only two and a half years in, so awesome. that was like capacity wise, like stretched us massively. So. <laughs> We, yeah. we, it's not like um, I was. I was about to say like it. It doesn't feel like we work, but that's probably a lie. Like we've been working pretty hard, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we good. enjoy it because it's like something that we've built ourselves. We believe in it. We believe in like the the future that we wish to create through the brand, and um, that's definitely my favorite thing. It's just like yeah, just being able to work on something that you're deeply passionate about, you believe in, and like push all your energy into building building that 
Yeah, look, your brand looks amazing, by the way. Uh, everything about your products aesthetically, you know, looks amazing. I ha I'll have to give it a good go because <laughs> I, I love my bushwalking and I take my kids yeah, out, yes. you know what I mean, for all those things. I'm a big yeah. outdoor guy, so I can't wait to uh, try that. So I guess uh, I'm going to leave you with one more question. What is yep. sort of the biggest um, – tip you're getting to start. And before you answer that, I'm just going to invite everyone uh, to uh, either jump on Q&A to ask Cam a question. So I'm, uh, I, I have only time for one more because we're obviously uh, going over time. But if you also want to jump on, um, um, on screen to ask him a question directly, you can do that by raising your hands. Uh, just down the bottom on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the middle of your screen, you should see a raise hand button and I can pop you in for that for that question as well. So please, um, Cam, can you answer that question? Yeah, so I think my biggest tip for getting started is just like really putting a lot of focus and thought into what what's the thing that uh, people who interact with your business, like what's the thing that they can really believe in or align their lifestyle with so for us like it's um pretty straightforward because we're an outdoor brand we believe nature is really healing and like really healthy to to get people out into um and so obviously that's like something that pulls people into the brand people that like align with that belief or align with that passion uh just naturally like drawn towards the rally because um it connects with who they are so I, my biggest tip would be to like put a lot of thought into what's that one thing that people can like naturally gravitate to your business uh, to and then really make a, a big effort in putting a lot of focus uh, into making that like the focal point of, of your business. So whatever it is, um, I believe everyone can like can find that, that one thing, whatever type of business whether it's like direct to consumer, service based, I think everyone can like, can really find that. And then just like put laser focus into that one thing, um, that lifestyle that you like wish to promote or um, that mission that you're trying to achieve and um, just like laser focus in on that in the early days and just try to clear out as much as you can, the, the other ideas you have or the other things uh, that can, I guess, get in the way of that single mission. And, um, yeah, because that's, that's what, I guess, that's where your, like, brand equity or the equity in the business really comes from is, like, having a really strong why, mission, lifestyle behind it. So Yeah, fantastic. Oh, excellent. So, look, I'm just going to check the Q&A section and see if one uh, – so uh, thank you for spending time. Well, someone is thanking you for spending time with us, so I really appreciate yeah. that, Cam. Uh, so we don't have any questions, but that's fine. So thank you so much to, for, for, um, for joining us today, Cam, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing Zorali uh, going to places. Yeah. I mean, it's, it already is, you know, so that's the best part. And that's okay. – uh, uh, it sounds like more importantly, though – you found your peace in your business, you know, and I love yeah, yeah. Um, hearing your story going through all that, uh, which is, which is incredible. No, thanks. Thanks for having me.